sort of thing. Oh, I gotta work on my posture. My gosh, I feel like I'm just hinged over all the time. Oh, gotta get back on the truck. That's what I need to do. But anyway, huh. Welcome back to the garage guys. I'm Damien. This is the binder builder. Last video we started on the lower control arms. This video we're going to finish the lower control arms. Just really quickly, I know I'm kind of going through all the steps that I'm using to build this suspension, but I do want to reiterate that this is my very first A-arm desert oriented high speed suspension. So please uh, don't take this as a, a how-to. This is more like how I'm building my bug. And me talking through all of my theories and stuff is just basically to help you understand my thinking process as I'm building this A-arm suspension. But with that, initially I went with, I wanted to do a nice sleek arm, right? Just super sleek, super, you know, just so, you know, cut through the wind type sort of stuff. but. After I built this, um, I was a little concerned that it was not beefy enough. And the reason why a lower arm makes a difference to me is because anything that I run over is going to probably hit the, the lower arms first before it hits anything else. So, so I was a little concerned that this type of strength wasn't going to be enough. So I took that design idea and I made it all out of inch and a half by three. That was inch by three. So inch and a half by three, this is eighth inch wall, um, a little more stout, right? So that was the thought on inch and a half by three and why I switched out to inch and a half by three. The next part of this build is basically uh, finishing up these arms. I'm gonna be putting some plating on, I'm gonna put a bumper on the front edge. I'm going to also be um, using some more of the inch and a half by three box tube and I'm going to cope it out and then slide it all the way down. And what that'll do is just basically spread out the load across the entire arm instead of having it localized in the weld-in bung. When I thought about the bung mounts, I decided to tie up some loose ends, i.e. the pivots at the bulkhead and frame. After squaring everything up, I notched out the arms so they fit the sleeves. Then I pulled out the welder and started tacking. Satisfied everything stayed in place, I started welding everything in. Then I marked out and cut some box tube for the crossbar at the bottom of the arm. I was going to make it curved, but yeah. With that welded in, I started measuring out the axle line. And from there, the lines that are going to govern where I'm going to put the rib along the A-arm. After cutting and cleaning the box tube, I marked out the places to cut. including the welded bar. And started cutting. I ended up using the cutoff wheel since the porter band doesn't go as deep as I needed to cut.
Then I took it to the arm, found where I needed to trim a little. I also notched a little section out of the base arm so that the rib will interlock into it. Success. Time to make things permanent. While I'm here, let me show you how I'm putting in the weld-in bung. I'll be cutting angles into the one and a half by three. This will allow me to weld the bung inside the box and not just around the perimeter. Then the rib was tacked to the arm and fully welded on. Next, I cleaned up the welds, but there's still a lot to do. All right, guys. Okay, so I've been playing around with some tube. Um, what I did is I basically took a piece of the one and three quarter, cut it right in half, um, long wise, obviously. Um, and this is the thought here. Um, this is inch and a half, this is an inch and three quarter, eighth wall, so the inside diameter is uh, an inch and a half, so boom, it fits right down on top of there. But yeah, that saddles that very nicely that gives me got to do a little more trimming that'll fit that very nice put a 45 into the joint there so that'll come off of that not bother the joint put a 45 or some sort of uh, angle into this and then I will just fill this whole section here it won't do that in real life I promise uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway fill this all up and then around uh, with a plate fill that with plate um, and here's the thing I was thinking of as well if I'm doing it to the front end I, I know I know Dom stop 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 what you're doing stop making it more complicated than it needs to be uh, what are you doing uh, <laughs> that's what I'm doing that's what I'm doing right there I could chop it there put another piece there and, and like I said, I'm going to be plating this whole top end or bottom end and top now. Um, wrap around 45, 45. That would be really cool because uh, then I can, uh, I have no idea what these things will weigh after I'm done. Right now it's 17 pounds, uh, 17 and a half roughly. Um, and uh, add a plate, adding, this is like a pound. It's really not much. Um, so one, two, three, four, and then probably end up around 25 20 to 25 pounds um, on uh, done completely done uh, which it's a lot I, I agree uh, I understand and that's one of the reasons why I wanted double shocks and bypasses that could help control that weight the, the mass going up and down hitting rocks and things of course um, lighters better but um, so this is where I start justifying what I'm about to do. It really doesn't matter what I'm saying because the truth of the matter is I got a wild idea in my head and I'm contemplating letting it play out. At least I'm honest. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's dumb as a box of rocks, but I'm going to do it. Um, uh, a little heavier than I wanted it to be, or I'm going to want it to be, but um, still, I'm going to do it. And I think that it will work out in the end. And if not... With that, I got some uh, drops from when I built the roll bar and cut them in half. Again, the porter band is too shallow, so I ended up using the cutoff wheel. Then I cut and trimmed the half rounds to fit the arm and started tack welding them in.
Then it was time to make some patterns for the plate. With the patterns made, I drew them out on the plate and pulled out a new tool. This is the Evolution Metal Skill Saw. I got this idea from Doug Bug Builder. He's a YouTube guy that built a couple of bugs. He had a video that highlighted a lot of his tools, and this was one of them. Since I knew I needed to make some long straight cuts, I picked one up. I'll give it its own video later. Alright. <laughs> Let's see. First piece made with the uh, skill saw. Oh, damn. Uh, let's do this real fast. I'm going to do a quick bend with the vise. Flatten that out. That's going to weld. Oh, yeah. It's going to be flat. That's cool. Um, I'm pretty pleased with that, to be honest with you. And then I could hammer this over to fit that. That's, that's freaking sweet, dude. All right, cool. With the first piece working out so well, I started cutting out and trimming the rest of the plate to fit the other. I wanted this to look real smooth, so I took some time, making sure the gaps weren't too wide. After everything was good, I tack welded them in. Then seam welded the whole arm. This took a lot of time and a ton of welding wire. Then the grinding started. After grinding, we we'll sand it. It's uh, got a few little things I gotta do, just gotta cap off the ends and then uh, add shock mounts. That's it for the most part. This thing's pretty heavy, uh, heavier than I wanted it to be. Uh, before I put the plate on, it was about 17 pounds, and it's uh, it's it's more than that now. <laughs> um, kind of happy the way it looks. I love the way it looks, actually. I'm glad I put the uh, the round tube uh, bumpers. I hate to say it that way. I got two bumpers on my lower control arms. Um, probably didn't need those, to be honest with you. Um, I could have just ran without those. But anyway, oh, I like the way that came out, to be honest with you. I really do. That is as, that's pretty smooth, man. I will say that is really smooth. Um, the way that came out, I am very pleased with that. Yeah, got to put it all together, cap the ends, 
finish sanding it all off. Well, there's no time but the present, so I drew out some templates and cut them out. After that, I welded them in and again started grinding and sanding. All right, guys, here's the finished product. I gotta tell you, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I'm not happy with the weight. It is, it is over 25 pounds. I like that it's, it's totally smooth and just wraps naturally right into that, right into the, the tube on the ends. And it just looks, it looks real nice. I, I just love the way that came out, to be honest with you. Um, it, it's kind of like it's a tube arm. And so when people ask me if I, what kind of arms I got, do I got box or tube? I could actually say I got tube. Because it's round on one side, it's round on the other side. <laughs> but anyway, it actually worked out really well, um, especially for my first attempt. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. It cost me, I want to say, quick numbers, I want to say it's about $100 in material. Um, if you count everything. Again, I love the way this kind of, this, just the way this worked out, this uh, shape. It works really, really well. I like that it dives, uh, dives forward and comes back and that the heim itself is pretty much right in line with the back side of the front forward bushing. Um, I like that it dives way far back in the back. So as I hit things, you know, hit bumps and drive, you know, no matter what I hit, because it comes through the tire or actually hits the arm, it transfers all that load back into the frame. Um, really like it, to be honest with you. Heavy, yes, um, but I like it. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It really, yeah. So here's an idea. How about we do this? Um, I'm not going to tell you how much it weighs. Why don't you guys leave a comment and take a guess. What do you think? How much you think it weighs? Tell me what you think. Just leave it in the comment section. Remember this, at, on this phase, it was just over 10 pounds. I think it was 10 Point eight pounds and then with everything except the plating and the the uh, round tube it was 17 so what do you think it is that's it for this video guys I appreciate you guys watching and uh, a lot of you guys are commenting I appreciate that as well I realize it I realize I'm building over building this I really do um, what do you think I should call it a couple of you guys have made comments about it um, and that has thought it made me think of a name for the build but I don't want to brand it quite yet. Uh, we'll see how that works out. But tell me, what would you call this build? Um, seeing the uh, lengths and depths that I will go. <laughs> but anyway, um, anyway, I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm Damien, and this is The Binder Builder.